Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Tia and today we'll be talking about 5 sleeper OP picks and builds that you should be abusing for some free LP. You definitely know the popular OP picks and builds since they are all over social media, including our own YouTube channel. But in this video, we'll be looking at some of the lesser known builds today. The first of those builds that we'll be going over today is Zack Top. Zack Top has had an overall positive performance for a bit, but now he's really starting to get up there. He may even be the best tank in top lane at the moment. The biggest issue with playing tanks in solo queue is that they have a somewhat weak early laning phase, which is supposed to be made up for with hard scaling into the mid and late game. But with Divine Sunderer and Black Cleaver being buffed a couple of patches ago, it's really hard for tanks to ever get their feet on the ground and start winning 1v1s against champs that can abuse that broken pair of items. Of course, if you're playing Malphite or Ornn, you're still going to have crazy impact when you're grouped up due to how much engaged potential you bring to team fights. But between those team fights, side laning can feel pretty bad, and if your team doesn't have total map control, you'll often find yourself being pushed around in the side lane and even giving up towers without much ability to contest your opponent. But with Zac, you don't have those same glaring weaknesses. In fact, if you've ever played against Zac, you know that he actually does a pretty hefty amount of damage. He's basically as good a duelist as any of the bruisers in top lane, and the build we'll be going over in just a bit ensures that the damage doesn't fall off. That way, you don't have to worry about eventually losing to your opponent. In solo queue, obviously individual play matters a lot, but a good portion of games can be decided, or at least made way harder, in champ select. Even if you have a fed carry, not having a tank to engage fights can make it hard for them to actually dish out their damage. Other times, you may have plenty of engage, but your team overall lacks damage in fights. Being able to deal a pretty good amount of damage and being a tank that can engage fights means that Zack can fit into literally any comp. In early lane, you'll play the sustain game, spamming W on the wave to constantly heal up. If your opponent is open for a Q, feel free to go for a heavier trade, but hold your E cooldown as an escape tool unless you're 100% sure you can pick up a kill. Outside of laning, you'll play Zac pretty much the same as in the jungle. You'll look to engage fights, preferably from the fog of war, causing as much damage and disruption as you can to the enemy backline. Now, let's take a look at the build for Zac Top. For your runes, you'll run Conqueror, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand, Conditioning, and Revitalize. If your opponent is ranged or just trades a lot in general, you may want to go Second Wind over Conditioning. The stat runes you'll run are Ability Haste, Armor or Magic Resist, and Health. For your items, you'll start Doran Shield, then build Sunfire Aegis. Zack's core build can vary a bit. In general, you'll go Lucidity Boots, but against tougher AD opponents, you may want Steel Caps. Your next item will be Thornmail, then Demonic Embrace. Rounding out your build, you'll go for Spirit Visage and Warmog's Armor. This build will make you about as durable as any other tank, but the first three items make you as much of a backline threat as Camille or Hecarim in fights. Part of what makes Sleeper OP picks so successful is the fact that nobody plays them. Objectively speaking, they may not be better than or even as good as the most popular picks, but when your opponents don't know how to play against them, you get that extra edge in the fight. But that alone isn't quite enough to win you all of your solo queue games. You also need to have the skills to get those early leads and the know-how to use those leads to win your games. And that's where we come in. With the Pro Guide sub, you get access to all of your online courses, unlimited chats with our top tier coaches, and if you decide to book a session, you'll even get a discounted rate. And there's no better time than now. We're running a big deal. Just use discount code RANKUP2021 for 20% off your sub. So head on over, pick up your sub, and start climbing the right way today. Now let's get back to the video. Our second sleeper build we'll be going over on this patch is Trundle Top. This pick is a bit more niche. While Zack is a pick that is always a good pick because he meshes so well with any team comp, Trundle is basically on the other end of the spectrum. You don't pick him up to go with your team comp. You pick Trundle to completely hard counter tanks. He's literally built to make them useless. We actually talked about Trundle Top as a sleeper OP pick way back on 11.7, but with Divine Sunderer getting that fat buff on patch 11.11 .11, and the addition of more split pushing items now, he's even better. Tanks in general aren't exactly the most popular picks right now, but when you do end up against one, it can be pretty frustrating. A lot of players refer to tanks as the champs for, and I quote, no skill players, because they just stack up resistances and eventually win fights against you even when you're ahead. Obviously, the Sunderer and Cleaver buffs made champs like Nar, Fiora, Camille, and Alawi better into tanks, but what if you don't play those champs? 
Maybe they're too mechanical for you, or you just don't like how they feel. Well, then you should really consider adding Trundle to your pool or pocket picks. He's incredibly simple, so you don't have to put a lot of time into learning him, and with such easy mechanics, there's practically no room for you to even make an error. When you pick Trundle against a tank, your game plan is pretty simple. For pretty much the entire game, you'll be single-mindedly shoving in waves, split-pushing until you've taken the entire enemy base. The thing is, in a side lane, tanks are completely useless against you. Divine Sunder allows you to chunk them out in trades, and anytime you want to commit to an all-in, your ult allows you to melt through them, and in some cases, even dive them under tower. The result is that they can't even hold you down in a side lane, the enemy team has to send multiple champs to stop you. When they do, your team should be able to win elsewhere with a numbers advantage. But if you try to group, you're giving the enemy tank the chance to be useful. Everyone thinks Trundle counters tanks because his ult makes them easier to kill. But if you group up to fight 5v5 fights, and the enemy Malphite is able to get off a big ult, it doesn't matter how squishy you make him. As long as he gets off that engage, him dying after doesn't really matter. His ult alone is potentially enough to set up his team for victory. There are the occasional fights where you may be forced to group, such as when the enemy team is forcing Baron or fighting for Elder. If your team can't stall, group up and fight front to back. Never try too hard to dive as Trundle. You'll just be kited to death. Now, let's look at the build. For your runes, you'll take Conquer, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Demolish, and Revitalize. The stat runes will be Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resist. You can also run a Grass page if you prefer that, but we recommend Conqueror for harder carrying. For your items, you'll be starting with a Corrupting Potion. You'll rush Divine Sunderer, then go for Merc Treads and Ravenous Hydra. Since we're heavily focused on split pushing against tanks with this build, you can afford to go Blade of the Rune King next instead of a tankier option. Follow that up with Steric's Gage, then finish off your build with Spirit Visage. Our next sleeper pick for this patch is Gragas Support. While he's statistically not that great of a champ, that's because Gragas, like Trundle, is a very situational pick. If you end up playing him against the double ranged bot lane, you're not going to have a very good time. You'll be giving a duo like Lulu Cog or Kate Zyra a free lane, and they can easily take over the game with that. I'm speaking from experience because I play both Lulu and Zyra. Instead of being an all-around good pick, he's specifically good as a counter to champs that want to go in. Leona, Alistar, Rel, Tristana, Gragas is a great counter to them all. That's all thanks to his E. Anytime those champs try to go in on your ADC, you intercept them with a body slam. If they try to go in on you, good luck to them. The combination of Aftershock and your W gives you a mini Alistar ult for a couple of seconds, as long as your keystone is off cooldown. One big advantage Gragas has going for him is his Q. Most melee supports are pretty single-minded in what they do. Whether they engage fights or peel in them, they're mostly just tanky CC bots that want to disrupt the enemy. Gragas' Q gives him some poke damage, so while you sit back with the enemy bot lane unable to engage you, you'll be whittling them down the entire laning phase. Once you get his ult, that's when Gragas' playmaking potential comes online. Pre-6, Gragas is pretty simple. You roll out Qs for poke, W if they go in on you, and E to block engage or go in for a trade. It's all very basic, but his ult opens up a lot of possibilities. For example, if you're laning with a strong ADC, you can now hard force fights. Use your E flash combo to stun one of your opponents, and then drop an ult just behind them to knock them into your ADC to spoon feed them a kill. If the enemy bot lane is the one with kill pressure, you can instead hold your ult until they make their move. Some supports like Knot and Leona have ults that you can't disengage with your E. In those cases, throw your ult out to knock their ADC far away from the fight to prevent any follow-up damage. The ability to disrupt enemy engages extends to team fights just as well. Maybe you see Fiddle channeling his ult over the wall. Most champs would be completely powerless to stop it, even with vision. But Gragas can save the game with a quick ult to interrupt the channel. Or maybe it's a misfortune, ulting from the back of the team fight in a jungle choke point. Thanks to the high range and big area of effect, you can stop that from well outside of most other champs' effective ranges. Other times, a diver may make it onto your back line, but instead of peeling said diver, you ult to knock the rest of their team away. With you delaying any type of follow-up for a few seconds, your team essentially gets to 1v5 the attacker. Now that you have an idea of what Gragas has to offer as a support, let's take a look at his build. For runes, you'll be running Aftershock, Fawn of Life, Bone Planing, Unflinching, Biscuit Delivery, and Cosmic Insight, with the stat runes being Double Adaptive Force and Armor. For your items, start with the Relic Shield, then build into Lucidity Boots and Locket of the Iron Solari. 
If the enemy is AD heavy or has a ton of CC, Steel Caps and Merc Treads are viable, but Gragas gets a lot of value out of Lucidity Boots. Next, you'll build into Zeke's Convergence, Zonia's Hourglass, and Vigilant Wardstone, if the game goes long enough. If you don't need the stasis from Zonia's to survive and want a more aggressive option, you can grab an Abyssal Mask to give your teammates even more damage. In the last few years, Gragas has been well known as a jungler and support, but those of you that have been playing for a while now know that he used to actually be an AP mid laner. Just like Gragas, plenty of other champs show up in an off-meta role, and a lot of times they actually do better on that role than the one they are intended to be played in. For example, mages like Brand and Zyra are generally pretty average or even bad as mid laners, but are great supports with oppressive lane phases. On the other end of the spectrum, there are always those supports that end up becoming disgusting solo laners, as we've seen with Sona, Soraka, Lulu, and Karma in recent times. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What's your favorite off-meta pick? Let us know your answers down in the comments below. Now, without further ado, let's get back into the video. Taking things back to the top lane for a third entry, we have Fiora with the newly reworked Stridebreaker. In case you aren't exactly aware of what they did to the item, the most important parts are that the active no longer gives you a dash, but to compensate for removing the dash, they heavily increase the slow, from 40% decaying over 2 seconds all the way up to 90% decaying down to 40% over 3 seconds. That's an immense increase in sticking power, but if you can't actually get onto the target, it doesn't mean anything. Take Darius for example. The dash made up for his lack of mobility and that pretty much eliminated his only real weakness of being kited. So if you're playing him, you'd say the item was nerfed pretty hard. But for a champ that already has a ton of mobility, like Fiora, she'll gladly take the new version. Gore Drinker is still going to be better for team fighting, but if you know you're going to be firmly planted in a side lane for most of the game, which you usually are as Fiora, this is the mythic you want to go for. The increased slow, higher damage, and lower cooldown all make it a much better option in 1v1s. They even changed the active so you can cast it while moving now, so you can use the item mid lunge for smoother trading. The rest of the build will be pretty standard Fiora stuff, though we will be including one of the new items. Here's the full build. For your runes, you'll take Conqueror, Triumph, Bloodline, Last Stand, Magical Footwear, and Biscuit Delivery, with the stat runes being Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and Armor or Magic Resist. For your items, you'll start out Doran's Blade, then build into Essence Reaver, Steel Caps, or Merc Treads, and Stride Breaker. Your next two items will be Ravenous Hydra and Hole Breaker, and your last slot can be a situational item like Death Stance or Steric's Gage. Finishing off our list, we have Talia as a bot laner. We try to include mage alternatives to ADCs in our meta series, specifically top three mains, for two big reasons. One, they give you a magic damage option for when your team stacks AD champs in other roles. Two, the mages we generally talk about, like Ziggs, Heimer, and Zerath, focus on wave clearing and avoiding 2v2s as much as possible. That second factor makes some great choices when they're solo queuing, and you don't want to have to rely on random supports to play the game right, which is generally a good mindset to have when you're playing in the lower elos. But Talia doesn't quite fall into that category. In fact, she's nowhere near it. Instead of being a wave-clearing, low-interaction champ, when you play Talia as a bot lane carry, you're trying to play a kill lane. So with all of that said, this pick is really only best when you have a duo, or you're playing in an elo where you can trust random support players to play aggressive supports at least somewhat decently. That's because the key to making Talia work is having a support that can set you up to land her combo. Talia has crazy burst damage, but landing her W on a moving target is hard and nearly impossible if you have a dash or a blink. But when you have a support like Leona or Nautilus, you can easily net kill after kill. On top of being a more aggressive laner, you're also going to be a lot more proactive on the map than those other champs. As you'll see when we go over the full build, you'll even be running runes that enhance your roaming strength. So in matchups where your opponents give you a little too much respect, you can use your combo to quickly shove in the wave and go for a roam instead. Use these roam timers to help your jungler take Scuttle or Dragon, get deep vision in the enemy jungle, or even go for a gank to help your mid laner out. Now for the build. For your runes, you'll run Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, Relentless Hunter, Celerity, and Water Walking, with the stat runes being Double Adaptive Force and Armor. For items, you'll start with Doran's Ring, and at some point on an early recall, pick up Dark Seal. Like with all mages, you'll want to recall as soon as you can afford Lost Chapters so you have the mana sustained to shove in the enemy bot lane. You'll then pick up Sork Shoes, upgrade Lost Chapter to Ludens, and if the game is going well, upgrade Dark Seal to Mejai's Soul Stealer. 
After that, grab Rabadon's Void Staff and Zonia's. If the enemy team has a high threat diver, feel free to grab that Zonia's earlier in your build. And that wraps things up for our sleeper builds you're missing out on for patch 11.13. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to sub so you never miss out on our meta guides so you're always in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember to let us know your favorite off-meta pick down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description box below where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, stay safe, and eat a cookie. Because cookies are really great and I just think that you should have one. Okay, have a good day, bye! Oh, <laughs>